Welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you so much for joining me today as we take a look at the astrological energies from October 9th until October 16th as we are rocking and rolling through eclipse season energies. And over this week, we have Jupiter stationing retrograde on October 9th. October 11th brings us Pluto stationing direct. And then we have a whole slew of transiting aspects on October 13th including Mercury entering Scorpio. So we will go through all of these specifics in today's show. But first, a quick programming note that this is pre-recorded as I had to evacuate from incoming Hurricane Milton here in Florida. We were able to safely get out of the path of the hurricane, but I have no idea what I'll be returning home to. This is the fifth time I've had to evacuate for a hurricane since I've been in Florida since 2016. And there's things I just know to do. You print out all of your insurance policies, you prepare your house, as best you can. Fill up the car with gas. I also had two extra five gallon gas containers on hand. Get cash out of the ATMs and then prioritize your safety. So that's what I've been doing this week, but it's also allowed me to focus on work as a way to channel the energy. And that's why I've not only pre-recorded this podcast for you, but I've pre-recorded other videos. So I will still have content coming out on YouTube and on social media because that's how I can use this energy in a productive focused way. And just pulling this into the fact that it's Libra season, the ability to balance ourselves right now is even bigger and more prominent because of how much is unsettled on the planet. So not only the weather and all of the changes that are moving through our planet, but also the grand awakenings that are happening and all the people who are being shocked awake and stunned at revelations. All of this stirs up chaos and disruptions. It's very unsettled and it also makes us feel uncertain. So this is where we then and call in our spiritual tools, our energetic tools to ground us, to stabilize us, and to prioritize what do I have control over right now? I can breathe deeply. I can release. I can get on the treadmill. I can do some yoga poses and move the energy physically through me. I can take time to regulate my nervous system in order to be in control of everything I'm feeling and what is moving through me. And it's also important to have areas of your life that you look forward to, whether that is a creative passion or outlet, a hobby, a favorite book you're reading, even cleaning, straightening, reorganizing, all of that is moving energy around too. So if you're feeling that in yourself, just know that it's very big in the collective right now. There have been a lot of big storms that have come through since that Pisces lunar eclipse. We've not only had Hurricane Helene, but there was Storm Boris in Europe. There were two typhoons in Asia, a super typhoon as well flooding and mudslides in Nepal, Hurricane John in Mexico. We can't deny the influence of these Pisces energies and how they show up, especially through the oceans, the tides, and these big water movements. So we as energetic beings feel them too. And even if these energies are nowhere near where you are, where you live, that could be what you're picking up on as well. Eclipse energies are unfolding throughout the month of October. This is simply the signature of energies coming up now that ultimately serve an important purpose. It's shaking us up and require us to make changes, to become more conscious of ourselves and how we're living our lives, to stay aware of what we want and to move towards that, to know that you're worthy of what you want in this lifetime and you deserve it. And there could be messages coming through, especially this week, that are really loud and clear. And this is especially true with Jupiter stationing retrograde at 21 degrees of Gemini. Now, this is exact on October 9th at 3.04 a.m. Eastern Time. But really, the influence of Jupiter stationing is felt 
a week before and a week after. So we've already been in this energy, but you could have some true clarity. And as Jupiter stations, the station is a standstill. And so when things stand still, the energy stops moving, so to speak, and whatever's in the air falls down, there could be new understandings, new clarity that you arrive at in the standstill. So stay aware of what that might be for you this week, especially where you have 21 degrees of Gemini in your natal chart, whichever house, whichever house that energy is at is where the messages are really big. And keep in mind that Jupiter is supportive. Jupiter is beneficial. And the station retrograde is asking you to look at what is for your best and highest good. What is truly something that you want to choose? And the retrograde helps you come into alignment with that in a more complete way. Now, I did a podcast episode for you on Monday, October 7th, discussing Jupiter retrograde in Gemini energies. The retrograde lasts for four months and Jupiter retrograde is going to be traveling with Chiron retrograde in Aries at 21 degrees. Now this is actually exact October 12th, but they will continue moving retrograde together into November as they move back to 19 degrees and then Jupiter will continue on to lesser degrees in Gemini. So from now until the middle of November, these two are syncing up in your chart. They're aligning two houses, two energies in your chart, again, where you have 21 degrees of Gemini and 21 degrees of Aries. Two parts of your life are coming together for new solutions, new levels of self-acceptance, a new understanding of what you really want to choose and what you really want to do. And I also believe that as they voyage back together into November and get to 19 degrees of Aries, especially that Chiron. This is the solar eclipse point from April 8th, where we had that April 8th new moon solar eclipse. The sun, the moon, and Chiron were all conjunct at 19 degrees. There's going to be a new understanding here. It could even feel like a strengthening of self, mental clarity, fuller understanding of your priorities, what you want, what would be good for you, as well as self-acceptance. So this is beneficial healing energy and it's showing up into the middle of November, again, in these two areas of your chart. So we'll take it when we get it, right? So certainly stay aware of what might be coming up for you that initially started in your consciousness back in April. Now, in addition to Jupiter stationing retrograde, we now have Pluto stationing direct on October 11th at 29 degrees, 38 minutes of Capricorn. And this stationing direct is a big deal because I'm calling this the never ending story. For two years, we've been talking about this degree point. I think I started talking about it in 2022, actually. But Pluto getting to 29 degrees of Capricorn, the anoretic degree of completion, release, powerful realizations and decisions, really looking at how much of yourself and your life has evolved beyond your control since 2008, 2009. This energy stationing direct on October 11th signals that we're in the final home stretch of this never-ending story that has absolutely exhausted you, required you to collapse at times, and yet then show up to keep going through it. Because now Pluto has about five weeks left in Capricorn that is an opportunity for you to power up and recognize how much the Capricorn energies have evolved you, changed you, matured you, required you to detach and step back as needed or as appropriate. This also signals a really big closing out of karma, soul contracts, outdated roles and titles, moving away from what you're realizing is not your responsibility, as well as stepping up into more of what truly is 
your responsibility. This energy in Capricorn has required us to take more control of our lives and to own our path ahead, to own our soul mission, what we're here to do, how we're here to contribute and show up in the world. And there is also the realization that you have to do so from your own sovereignty, from your own sense of self. And this is where the Capricorn energy will separate out others from your world, others from your life who are not on the same path or trajectory for whatever reason. But it shows where that soul contract is complete. And there's a part of ourselves that really knows this and can feel it, especially in the higher levels of our soul. But it can be our humanness that is wrestling with things and feels the discomfort. And that's part of what we're learning here over these next five to six weeks of Pluto finalizing the journey through Capricorn is what do you need to take full ownership over that is truly correct for you and what is not. And this does involve separations, completions and unravelings, but you could see it as a gift that the gift in understanding what is right for you or what you need to choose. Um, perhaps you're realizing where a job and profession is no longer fulfilling. It's not who you are anymore. You don't got any gas in your tank for it. It's not connecting. And you're realizing you need to move on. You need to move forward. And with Pluto, there can be a sense of there's no choice. There's only one direction to go. Everything else is removed, demolished, taken away. And so there is only this one direction that you have to trust and follow, but you're sourcing the energy from a more powerful place within you. And that can mean too, that you might reconnect with some of these people that you are leaving or these jobs you're leaving, whatever you're separating away from or whatever you're realizing is complete for you. It allows people to go on their own path and to grow in their own ways. And then there can be reconnections later if there is an energetic match some point down the line, even five or six years later. Now, Capricorn takes the long-term perspective, which is why I'm offering that, is that you don't know how things are going to play out or what others are going to choose. And you certainly don't know everything about your own path at this time either. But what we can see is what's in front of us and trusting the clear messages from the universe, trusting that whatever this is for you, you've already been in it because this Pluto has been moving back and forth at 29 degrees of Capricorn since last year. So you've been in it for two years. That's why I'm calling it this never ending story because it could feel like here I am revisiting this issue again. And it's Almost like your soul is requiring you to feel really, really strong and powerful at a whole new level of your being. But the fatigue is real. The exhaustion is real. Being tired of being in the same experience or lesson or karma is real. So know that that's valid. Like that's valid and appropriate to feel that way. But here we are in the final home stretch of this theme and the truth is that because it's been a two-year ongoing experience, you are different. You have changed internally, energetically, right? You could feel that mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically. You have changed in this area of your chart where you have 29 degrees of Capricorn. So you're not the same person revisiting the same thing in the same way. No, you have evolved and moved through it. I feel like what can happen is that we can be deeply changed and then look around at the environment that hasn't changed or the people that haven't changed or the situations that haven't changed. And then we think, oh, if they haven't changed or if they don't look different, then maybe I haven't. But you are most likely doing the work, especially when you are tuned into astrology and energetics, and you're aware of what you've been working through consciously and intentionally, the power struggles, the dynamics that are really uncomfortable that have pushed you into new places in yourself, requiring you to stand stronger on your own. 
And part of the Capricorn energy is related to the spine and the backbone, literally feeling like, okay, I've had to reconstruct my energetic backbone. I've had to have more spiritual strength. I've had to stand on my own in a whole new way. I've had to face the karma and stand strong in whatever this energetic weather might be. So be sure to recognize that in yourself. Because the truth is, we have been energetically reconstructed. And that is part of how we then get stronger in knowing what we want and where we want to go as we move ahead. So just like that Jupiter stationing retrograde where the energy lasts or is felt a week before a week after, the same is true for Pluto, but it's actually a deeper influence. So the energy is typically felt two weeks before and two weeks after. So this Pluto stationing direct is really a big part of this eclipse season. And it makes sense why so much is unsettled and so much is going on and stirring and churning within us because we are truly awakening to more of our own life choices and life possibilities outside of what we thought, outside of what we expected or how we thought things would play out. And it's happening now. It's really alive now. So in addition to these big influences, we also have a lineup of energies on October 13th. We actually have six transiting aspects occurring on October 13th, and I'm going to break them down for you by planet. So first up, we have Mercury in Libra squaring Pluto in Capricorn at 29 degrees, and then Mercury enters Scorpio at 3.23 p.m. That's Eastern time. So this is a day of intense communications, most likely related to what's already been on your mind. The square from Pluto is about push comes to shove. You've got to say what you've got to say. Some people are going to be disappointed. There could be power dynamics involved. And as Mercury goes into Scorpio, a fixed sign of emotional truth, there could be a part of you that locks into a decision and what you want. There could also be a part of you that is now looking at the deeper meaning, the deeper fears, the intensity of a situation and what is unfolding. So this is where the diplomatic nature of Mercury in Libra actually goes off kilter, is not so diplomatic, is very direct, perhaps harsh, and delivers messages based on an underlining motive. There's also conviction here and passion. So that could be what you feel is driving you around communications, decisions, and choices on October 13th. On the same day, Mars in Cancer is in a T-square with Chiron retrograde in Aries at 21 degrees and squaring the sun in Libra at 21 degrees. So this means we have a T-square of three planets in a contentious conversation at 21 degrees and Mars in Cancer brings up emotional triggers that can reveal frustration, resentment, what is not progressing, what is not working. And this is a day where matters could come to a head that have been delayed or even act as some kind of surprise. So by now, you're probably like, I think I'll just hide on October 13th and not do anything. Now, the one thing that we do have positively unfolding on this day is the sun in Libra trines that Jupiter retrograde in Gemini at 21 degrees. And so Jupiter is going to offer another solution. Okay, that didn't work. That wasn't the right choice. Now try this. How about this option? Keep the conversation going is what the sun in Libra trining Jupiter retrograde in Gemini says. Keep communicating, share what's on your mind, allow other people to have their input, and that can break up some of the emotional tension that is being held and felt. There's a burst of energy that needs to come out. Now, stay mindful of your body because this can be injuries when Mars is squaring Chiron and Aries. This can be injuries. So make sure you don't move too fast or too impulsively, but know that this is energy coming out this weekend that is emotional 
And as I look at the lineup here, I'm also referencing the October 17th Aries full moon where the energy continues in that chart of whatever begins this weekend. Mars at 21 degrees of Cancer and the Sun at 21 degrees of Libra are also on a path forward to interact with Pluto at 29 degrees of Capricorn. This is a lot of pressure, tension, uncertainty that is looking for relief and movement. I do see this energy mostly connected with relationships with the sun in Libra. And so relationships can be contentious right now. I mean, we just got to call it what it is, right? And I hope it's validating if that's what you're feeling, um, because I really don't want to put a positive spin on this. When I see this energy, I'm like, this is rough. This is tough. This could be, you know, big decisions, hard conversations, things you don't like, and you're pissed off about it. And the truth is, you know, you're allowed to feel how you feel. You're allowed to be pissed off and not like it. You're allowed to be upset with somebody. You're allowed to be truthful about how you feel. But part of the Mars in Cancer and that Chiron in Aries is that because the energies can be impulsive, highly subjective, and immature. It's about taking responsibility and then removing yourself from the triggers, removing yourself from the individual, the person, or the circumstances that are really getting to you and prioritizing what you need. So it's kind of like everyone just go to your corner and take care of yourself. Do what you need to do and prioritize what you need to move through responsibly. So this is a practice of sovereign energetic responsibility and reminding yourself nothing lasts forever. No energy lasts forever. It all changes and evolves. Even if right now is a hot spot and a trigger zone, it doesn't stay that way. We're meant to move through it. We're not meant to stay in that. So what can you do that is healthy for you, that is good for you, that allows you to regulate what you're feeling, go through the feelings, but not create more issues or a bigger storm as a result. Because that could happen as these planets, especially Mars and the sun, move towards Pluto. There can be an escalation. Now, energetically and spiritually, we know this is right on time, that we are being pushed to make decisions, to move in new directions, that we are being required to awaken and really apply what we know. This isn't just meant to be mental knowledge. We're meant to be actively practicing what supports our energy, how to care for ourselves, and how to use this to our advantage. So this can be very creative. This brings about new solutions. The chaos directs you to something you would not have actively chosen. So what I'm feeling here is also allow room and space for the miracles. Allow yourself to be pleasantly surprised at what the universe can pull in or offer you. I'm also feeling that a lot of the disruption, it feels like a frequency war. We're in a frequency war of these different frequencies that don't jive, they're not gonna match, they're not on the same page, and that's part of what is being powerfully changed and activated right now that we're feeling and seeing. The Libra solar eclipse is about relationship changes and now they're happening and they are going to continue throughout this month because the universe is signaling where you're ready for the next stage of your journey. And that's what the Aries full moon is also bringing up what you need to do or claim for yourself, where your energy is meant to go, what is best for you. And I feel like it's also showing the disparity between energies and frequencies. So you just see more clearly, wow, we're really not on the same page or wow, we're really different people now. And you think about that in terms of a friendship or a connection or maybe even something that you were trying to hold together, you know, like it was just still connected through this patchwork of energy. And yet this energy rips it apart, shears it apart, and you see it for what it really is. Masks fall down. True intentions are known. Motivations are revealed. And it can be heartbreaking. It can be quite sad. And it might even feel like a loss, which is what the South Node in Libra is taking away. 
We also have Venus in Scorpio opposing Uranus retrograde in Taurus at 26 degrees on October 14th. And Venus opposing Uranus reiterates these themes of separation, surprises, changes, and also where the values are different, where you have other priorities or they have other priorities. Keep in mind that, you know, you could be on the receiving end of really feeling the difference in somebody else's choices or frequency. And there's a lot of disruption here that can take time to move through. October 15th, we then have Venus and Scorpio trining Neptune retrograde and Pisces at 27 degrees. And this can be a soothing influence, uh, the ability to just trust that you felt it or you're feeling it and you get it. And a part of you can trust that whatever is coming up and changing for you is meant to happen, that you don't have extreme control over it. Although that Venus in Scorpio certainly wants to. Uh, Venus in Scorpio has her secrets and the parts of her energy that she keeps hidden and is quite private around. So it's actually suitable to take your time, do what you need to do. If you need more time to yourself or to pull back, um, you might find yourself moving in that direction. I realize that's not always possible in your busy life and you have things to take care of if you have a family and responsibilities and people around you. But the energy here is actually requiring us to tune in to what we're truly feeling and sensing and to trust it, to trust that the universe has a plan for this and that we don't always see it right away, even if a part of us knows it and senses it. I'm feeling again this energy of collapse, like parts of ourselves are collapsing because they're not a frequency match to the newer parts of our energy that are coming alive. I'm seeing this at a cellular level, like a cellular level collapse. And then you have these new parts of yourself that are active and energized and happy and positive that are doing well, that are coming alive and feel quite excited about these changes. Now, keep in mind that as I talk about these energies, it works with everyone differently. And so you might be having the best week ever and realizing, I don't think I'm experiencing this at all, Molly. But that's part of how we are always in perfect balance. The universe is always in balance. So for those who are going through these intense changes, especially if you have planets or points in the third decan of basically any sign you are in it. You are feeling this in those areas of your life. So I'm looking at this lineup here. 21 degrees to 29 degrees are the heightened degree points this week. And as I go through the four elements here, all four elements are in play. For the air signs, we have 21 degrees of Gemini and Libra. For the earth signs, we have 26 degrees of Taurus, 29 degrees of Capricorn. For the fire signs, we have 21 degrees of Aries. And for the water signs, 21 degrees of Cancer plus 26 and 27 degrees of Scorpio and Pisces. So all of these energies are working with the third decan of each of the four elements. And these are the degree points of mastery, responsibility, completions, big decisions, full ownership of who you are and what you want. Approach this from an empowered place. Approach this from a very deep knowingness in your soul that this is what you're ready to move through and on the other side, it opens you up to the next level of choices and options. I feel too that the energy can take time to be processed and to move through as well as to settle. And I think it's going to be active again with the Aries full moon on October 17th, which happens at 24 degrees of Aries and is conjunct Aries. So one way to think of this is that new parts of yourself, new chapters, new areas of your energy are ready to come forward and you're clearing out and turning over the old of whatever is taking up time, energy, and space that is no longer a part of where you're going and what you want next. And this is how eclipses work. This is part of a timeline shift where sometimes it is quite messy. Uh, you could wake up one morning and feel like the energy has completely cleared, things have shifted, you're good, you're bright, you're happy. And then other times, the timeline changes 
are sticky and messy because the energies are more dense and they're not budging. Um, They're also perhaps more connected to other people. And if other people are holding a denser frequency or some kind of energetic hook or cording to you or to an experience, situation, whatever the case may be, then that also slows down that timeline shift and changeover. Okay, so now I'm getting the message that this is a perfect opportunity to call in peaceful energies that allow detachment, calm, harmony, freedom, and ease. And specifically through Ho'oponopono, which is a simple prayer and practice that also works with gratitude and love. This is also a prayer to offer yourself for any parts of yourself that you want to forgive or call in greater peace and calm around. There are four simple phrases for this practice, and I know that some people say them in different orders. And so one way you can go about invoking this energy is to say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. And again, you can say this to yourself. You can have the intention to say this to another while you sit in quiet meditation or quiet prayer. You can say this wherever you feel called to do so. And it is more powerful to say it out loud, to speak it, to give it your voice, and to allow it to be words that you genuinely put out into the atmosphere. This can be done with the intention of repair, acceptance, release, and completion. And if you know of another prayer or blessing that has worked for you, please feel free to share it on YouTube. Please feel free to offer it out to others so that we can have multiple tools and ways of calling in peaceful energy, especially during these very charged periods of time. Also hold the intention that everything is working for your best and highest good now. Everything is supporting you and everyone involved in the best and highest way. And when you call in that intention of the energy connecting to everyone involved, you've raised the intention and the frequency and you've allowed the universe to find even more solutions and options. This is also an expansion of compassion and heart energy that acknowledges that each of us is going through our own thing. But if we're willing to call on the highest and best next development for everyone involved, that multiplies the blessings as well as increases the goodwill. And of course, it won't stay like this for long. This is just a necessary phase of energetic changes and turnover that we're moving through. And if you'll notice back on your life, you've been in it before, right? You've been in situations like this before. You've made it through and there have always been options and next steps. And that is one of the strengths of this energy where the T square that I mentioned that's occurring on October 13th with Chiron retrograde in Aries, Mars in Cancer, the Sun in Libra, plus Mercury in Libra squaring Pluto in Capricorn. There is a new life form that's meant to take shape. There's a new beginning that needs to come through. And that's what the universe is requiring. It's requiring a new beginning, a new start. And that's part of this very intense pressure that we're feeling. So if you can stay focused on a little bit of the long term and understand that this is directing you to that next manifestation, that next dream, that next outcome that you really want, that long term perspective can help with the temporary experiences of now. And again, if you are not feeling this in your life, if this is not your situation, if this is not the energy you're moving through, then you have a beautiful gift right now of balancing the energy on the planet and holding a different imprint that supports what is coming up for many. So you are holding a very strong, powerful imprint of peace, stability, calm, grounded clarity, support, love, 
and whatever else it might be. And you might be witnessing others feeling this tension. You might be observing it and sensing it. You can even be feeling it even if you're not seeing it show up in your life. But this energy here is requiring a movement and that movement is happening ready or not. And as I mentioned, the movement will continue into next week with the October 17th Aries full moon. And I have that video on YouTube for you where I discuss the chart. So please check that out and you can see what is going on in your own chart with that energy because I feel it as this personal revolution and it's calling us to face parts of ourselves and parts of our fears in a whole new way with a new level of courage and to power through. So looking ahead, I do feel that this energy really clears by November 1st, which is also the Scorpio new moon. It will start to settle more as we move into Scorpio season, but I feel that this energy is directly related to the grand crescendo of Pluto finishing up the journey through Capricorn. This is really where we are going into the next phase of our journey, the next phase of energies on this planet, and the next phase of who we are. So when we look at it from that cosmic perspective, it makes sense. It's like, of course, we have to now make these life changes or step into this new energy more fully because that's right on time with everything that is unfolding in the cosmos. And I hope you can connect to that very wise, wise part of yourself that is handling this perfectly, that knows what the right choices or decisions may be, that understands the bigger picture of it all, because you absolutely arrived with a deep connection to that part of your soul's wisdom. This is also where eclipses working with the south node can feel like they're more intense because it's requiring us to make more life changes that feel disruptive, at least at first. And if it helps, just know that this is our last Libra South Node eclipse in this cycle, which is meant to do more of a deep clean. If you're looking for more strength, then you would look to the North Node in Aries as it's moving through your chart right now, as that's where you are gaining courage independence and moving into new potentials that have your name on it. And I guess I'll link this to my upcoming book that I wanted to remind you that you can still sign up for the free Zoom Astrology Masterclass that I'll be offering when you pre-order the book. And the book is called Soul Growth Astrology. So it ties into all this where it's helping you move through some of those stuck or stubborn patterns so that you can see them in a new light and actively transform them. The book is focused on the 12 astrology signs and what each astrology sign is learning in this lifetime. I share with you client stories, exercises, journal prompts, new insights perhaps that you haven't realized before and I just want to support how you can move into some new expressions for each sign in your chart. So if you pre-order the book on Amazon or Barnes and Noble or wherever you purchase books, then you can sign up over at my publisher's website to join us for the free Zoom masterclass on December 5th. And I will put the link below the podcast here so that you can join us. And yes, a replay will be available as well. Also, some of you have asked about my new class called Your Cosmic Codes, 12 Universal Spiritual Laws in Your Astrology Chart. It is a beginner introductory course where you don't need to know or fully understand a lot in your astrology chart. This takes you through the 12 universal spiritual laws, giving you exercises to do, ways to understand and see the energy in yourself, gives you an understanding of how it shows up in the real world. And then in part two, we take those 12 spiritual laws and apply them to your astrology chart so that you have another understanding of the energy you access regularly. 
And you can look back on hindsight to see how the energies have shown up for you. So this is just a cool new layer in your astrology chart, a different lens to look at. And I hope it gives you some very cool realizations and breakthroughs. So I'll put the link to that online course below the podcast episode as well. You can find all of my current offerings at mollymccord.online. If you're interested in any other type of astrology course, such as understanding your progress chart or your solar return chart. As I mentioned, I have pre-recorded some content for you here while I am offline. I don't know how long I'll be offline. That is just something I'll see as the week progresses. Thankfully, I do have support in people who can keep some things up and running for me. But of course, the bigger priority is to stay safe at this time. So I'll be back when I'm able to, wishing you a beautiful week ahead. And I hope that whatever changes and shifts you're moving through, you're also deeply trusting in your soul that you've got this. And it's a powerful opportunity to trust yourself more than ever. Take good care and I'll see you back here soon.